All right, guys, in today's video, we have more PlayStation news and information to go over and discuss. But before we dive into today's topics, if you could do me a big favor and hit that like button to help this video out and show it your support, I would certainly appreciate that. And if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. We're on our way to 100,000 subscribers. So again, it would definitely be appreciated. We're starting here, though, with the announcement of the next state of play that's actually going to be happening tomorrow. So this is reading from the official PlayStation blog, and it says we've seen Colt's head spinning powers in action before, but this Thursday we'll get a nine minute look at Deathloop's time twisted world as part of a new state of play. In this extended gameplay sequence, we'll see Colt use his abilities to stealthily skulk across rooftops or go in guns blazing to create a whole lot of mayhem, lots of options available on Black Reef Island. In addition to the long look at Bethesda's violent adventure, we'll have updates on some exciting indie and third party titles. The full show clocks in around 30 minutes. This showcase will not include updates on the next God of War, Horizon Forbidden West, or the next generation of PlayStation VR. Stay tuned throughout the summer though, as we'll have more updates soon. See you Thursday. So this comes as a bit of a surprise to anybody who has been patiently waiting for the announcement of the PlayStation event that we're all thinking, or at least most of us are thinking is going to happen. And at this point, a lot of people are now convinced that there will not be a PlayStation event, which I think is completely understandable, especially when you look at the specific wording that was used on the last sentence of this uh, write up on the PlayStation blog. So Sony is, in my opinion, wisely setting expectations for this state of play. We know it's going to be focusing on Deathloop, which I think is nice. I certainly would be open to seeing more gameplay of Deathloop. And we know we're going to be getting more indie titles and third party titles that we're going to see at this state of play. I personally hope we see more of Sifu, more of Canna Bridge of Spirits, and maybe some other titles as well. But what I really want to focus on with this write up is what Sony's saying at the end, where they're saying you're not going to see God of War, you're not going to see Horizon Forbidden West, and you're not going to see PSVR 2. But they're also letting us know that we should stay tuned because they are going to have more updates soon. Now, a lot of people are taking this as confirmation that there is not going to be an event. And instead, Sony is going to continue to do what they've done pretty much all year which is slowly trickle out information in the form of state of plays, blog posts, and new trailers. And I think that is certainly a possibility. Now, I personally believe there will still be an event, but I am feeling more unsure. I'm feeling less confident, but it would be very surprising to me, even still, if we find out that this is the way Sony wants to handle the information rollout throughout the entire summer. I think it could work that way, and I think it would actually be very exciting, you know, getting a full dedicated state of play for something like God of War, I mean, who wouldn't be excited for that? You know, getting another trailer for Horizon Forbidden West with a release date, who wouldn't be excited for that? Getting a state of play dedicated to, say, PlayStation VR 2, who wouldn't be excited for that? But there is something to be said about the big showcase events. There's just something special about them, and I think we all enjoy them. You know, it feels like, I guess you could say, the Super Bowl moment or PlayStation or when any company does that, right? And you always look forward to that. But at this point in time, we know a few things for sure. We know that we're getting a state of play tomorrow, which I will do a live reaction to, so I hope you'll tune into that. But we also know we're gonna be getting updates on all of these games, right? Sony mentions God of War, they mention Horizon Forbidden West, and they even mention PlayStation VR 2, which I'm not sure how many people were even expecting that, and at the same time, they're letting us know, hey, stay tuned, we're going to have more updates. That on top of knowing we're supposed to see and hear more of Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, Death Stranding Director's Cut, as well as many other games like Forspoken, Final Fantasy 16, and a lot of other titles I'm just failing to mention right now. These are all games that we are fully expecting to see and hear more about, and Sony is aware of that. And so it's going to come in one of two forms. It's going to come in the form of a big event that's going to happen either later in July, possibly in August, maybe even September, depending on how long Sony wants to wait to do it, or it's going to be a slow rollout and a kind of a drip feed situation with this information. Either way, I am at least grateful that Sony is letting us know in this blog post what to expect with this state of play and letting us know, more importantly, 
that we will be getting updates on the things that we've all been waiting to hear more about and see more of. So that's what I want you guys to focus on again. It is a little bit disappointing that we were all anticipating an event reveal. You know, we've had so many insiders, so many rumors, so many supposed leaks claiming the event's coming, it's definitely happening, and it's going to be announced on this date. And if there's something I've learned from this whole situation is that no one really knows what Sony's plans are. That's what I'm realizing. There are a few things here and there that insiders or leakers do get correct, but it's really far and few in between, and they've proven to mostly be unreliable. And so at this point in time, I think we can all agree that Sony has become pretty unpredictable when it comes to these types of things, these types of announcements, and what exactly to expect from them and how they're going to handle it. Because I got to tell you, I was not expecting a state of play announcement for tomorrow, right? Especially one focusing on Deathloop. I thought there was going to be something else. If we did get a state of play announcement, I thought maybe it would have been for God of War or something else. But here we are. And again, I don't think it's a bad thing because I always look forward to state of plays, you know? And again, I hope people understand that this state of play is not going to be massive, right? It's going to happen to show more Deathloop, more Deathloop gameplay, some indies, some third-party titles. You know, expecting any major reveals or announcements is not a smart thing to do, to expect. It's not what your expectation should be going into this. But at this point in time, it's anybody's guess. And I'm going to try to speculate a little bit less because at this point, I really feel I don't know, right? I just want to feel excited, which I am, that we are going to see more God of War. At least Sony is heavily implying that here. We're going to hear more about Horizon Forbidden West, and we may, might even hear more about PSVR 2. So I'm just going to kind of you know, keep my eyes peeled and pay attention and wait to see how Sony wants to deliver this information and these updates. So yeah, just wanted to take a moment to talk about that with you guys, but we're going to move on from that and talk about PlayStation Now's new titles that it just received because these titles did leak out and it looked like it was going to be a very, very strong month for PlayStation Now. And it turns out the leak was accurate. And so Rockstar Games has added Red Dead Redemption 2 as part of PlayStation Now, but that's not the only title that we ended up getting. There was actually multiple titles that are pretty significant that were added. So we're looking at Red Dead Redemption 2. And what's interesting about this is I don't think you can stream Red Dead 2 through PlayStation Now. I think this might be one of the only, if not the first, download-only title through PlayStation Now. I could be wrong about that, but I did see a few people mention that. You're also looking at Neo 2, so another very strong title that's being added. Uh, we have another title called Moving Out. We have uh, God of War, which I think is going to stay there now. We have Judgment. We have Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 and NASCAR Heat 5. So I thought that this was worth taking a moment to mention because, again, we did cover the leak that these were the games that were going to be added to PlayStation Now for the month of July. And it turns out the leak was true. A very solid month. It seems, again, that Sony is trying to double down somewhat on making PlayStation Now as appealing as it possibly can be. We know that PlayStation Now is not at the forefront for Sony. It's not their priority, but it's still something that they have to continue to grow and continue to care about because in the future, it may end up playing a bigger role within PlayStation, within Sony and their gaming division. So there you go. I personally don't use PlayStation Now, but if you do happen to use PlayStation Now, maybe you can let me know down in the comments below what you think of this month's additions. But we're moving on from that and talking about A Plague's Tale because we have some interesting updates regarding this title. This is the free PlayStation Plus game for the month of July for PlayStation 5 owners anyway. It is getting a free PlayStation 5 upgrade and it seems like it's a very significant one. Again, this is something we covered, but I do have to let you know something that may come off as a little bit disappointing and that is if you are planning to transfer your saves, you might have some issue doing so if you're playing on the PS5. So A Plague Tale, their official Twitter, they said, if you played A Plague Tale Innocence and are about to dive back into your save on next gen, this is what they tell you. PS4 to PS5, make sure to download the latest patch on PS4 before starting on PS5 to get your cloud save. 
Xbox One to Xbox Series automatic cross progression. So obviously you can see the difference there where it's just much more convenient to do this on Xbox than it is with PlayStation. And it's unfortunate that this is just something that has not been working in Sony's favor ever since the launch of the PS5, where it's just anytime it's involving some type of cross-gen, you know, save feature or anything like that, it's just a little bit more complicated and a little bit more convoluted on the PlayStation side of things than it is for Xbox. So that's definitely one of the advantages that Xbox does have. But I do have some good news when it comes to a Plague Tale Innocence on the PlayStation 5. Apparently, the PlayStation 5 version does offer some slight advantages over the Xbox Series version. Now, again, this is not to rub anything in, but just to let you know that it's something that if you are playing on PS5, you know, you might want to pay attention to. So a Plague Tale Innocence is now available on PlayStation 5 Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S, and it seems like the game looks best on Sony's current generation console. So there was a comparison that was done on a YouTube channel called Saiku One, and they highlight how the PlayStation 5 version looks best thanks to better shadows. So it's very small, very minor, but something that may make a difference to some people out there who really care about that stuff. And again, I just kind of wanted to highlight this because when it comes to each platform and each console, they all have their pros and cons. And if you're feeling a little bit frustrated that, you know, you may have to go back and update the PS4 version to transfer your save, maybe you can take a little bit of solace in the fact that apparently the PS5 has the better looking version of the game, even if it is just ever so slightly. Again, that's up to you to decide how much that matters to you, but I kind of wanted to throw that in here as well. So whether you decide to buy a PS5 and Xbox series, you're gonna be getting a solid console no matter what. But if there's anybody out there who has any fear that, uh oh, I might be buying the less powerful console and games might look a lot different or a lot worse, I don't think you have to worry about that. It seems like more often than not, it's actually the literal opposite of that. So there you go. This is a game I'm definitely gonna have to play at some point. I've heard very good things about it. The sequel looks very promising. So I'm definitely feeling good about this being the PlayStation 5 title that Sony is bringing to uh, PS Plus subscribers for July. We're moving on to the next topic now though, which focuses on Final Fantasy VII Remake, specifically part two. We have the co-director letting us know some of the challenges that they are currently facing with the development of this. Now I know many of you played Final Fantasy VII Remake and absolutely loved it. And so I wanted to be sure to cover this and let you know what's currently being said. So we have the co-director Naoki Hamaguchi speaking to IGN and again, letting us know some of the challenges and how apparently the biggest challenge will be to create gameplay that leverages the vastness of the world, which is apparently something they didn't really have to worry about in the first part of the remake. So as for improvement, or should I say change, again, this is the co-director speaking, moving forward because the next installment will involve Cloud and company to leave Midgar and explore the world map. Our next challenge will be to create gameplay that leverages the vastness of the world, unlike what we did in the current title. Speaking about the next installment of Final Fantasy VII Remake, Naoki Hamaguchi also reiterated the importance of not damaging the memories from the source materials while reimagining it to surpass players' expectations. So it's not a major update with the development of the next part of Final Fantasy VII Remake, but again, I know many of you are very eager to learn and hear more about the development of part two. And so according to the co-director here, this is something that they are trying to focus on very heavily where they want to, again, surpass people's expectations for what to expect from the remake while still remaining true to the source material. And apparently the challenge they're gonna face this time is trying to do more in a bigger space and have to worry about how they can, you know, kind of leverage new gameplay opportunities to take advantage of that. So just wanted to take a moment here to update you guys with that, but we're moving right along here and we're talking, believe it or not, briefly about Dreams because Dreams is a title that I feel Sony absolutely needs to do more with. It's not a game I play very often, if at all, honestly, but it's a game that people are very passionate about. And every time I see stuff like this, it just blows my mind. I know that they're doing a community driven event with I think something called Mega Penguin, which is pretty awesome, but there's something else I came across and that is a recreation of Ratchet and Clank 
in dreams and it's when you see stuff like this it just shows you how powerful this game actually is and how much can be done with it and so this was actually done by bad robo 82 and again i just wanted to take a moment to highlight this to show it off to show you that somebody literally recreated ratchet and clank in dreams and there are many of other things you can go find and explore on dreams and it's just crazy to me how little sony has done with dreams since it launched right i mean we don't necessarily know what else media molecule may be working on we do know that they are continually supporting dreams and still trying to you know support the creators and find new ways to get their content out there and i think that that's really the big problem right now with dreams frankly is that there is all of this content being created we have creators spending hours months you know maybe even years right things that they're working on that they know they're going to be working on for the next year or two uh, creating this amazing content and it's so limited right like it's just locked to the playstation 4 this is one instance where i actually don't um endorse exclusivity right because of the nature of this title i feel like dreams is a game that should be on as many platforms as possible uh, maybe, maybe as many platforms as sony is comfortable putting it on but at the very least i think we can all agree that dreams should be on ps5 by now and it should be on pc this is a game that should be on both of these platforms because again it's a it's a creation tool set and it's all about sharing the content and people exploring it and just the very nature of this game it's crazy to me that it's still locked on ps4 and you know when i see stuff like this it just reminds me that there's still people out here you know who are very creative and taking a lot of time to create this stuff and they're not really given the best opportunity to share it out there right and i think that sony should try to do something to uh you know correct that in my opinion so yeah maybe you can let me know down in the comments below is dreams a game that you still play or do you visit it from time to time and do you agree with me that I think Dreams should be available at the very least on PS5 and PC so that way more people can continue to create and more importantly, people's creations can be viewed and experienced by more players? Let me know down in the comments below. But we're going to close out this video talking, believe it or not, about GTA 6. There were some very interesting rumors regarding GTA 6 circulating recently and they seem to actually have something behind them. Now obviously we have to take everything we hear with a grain of salt but we're hearing very similar things from two very reputable sources. Some of the most trusted sources within the gaming industry currently who consistently have very reliable information. The first individual we're talking about is Tom Henderson. He's a reputable Call of Duty and Battlefield leaker. I'm sure many of you are very familiar with this person. And we also have Jason Schreier kind of corroborating what he's saying, letting us know that, yeah, I pretty much heard the same thing. So in regards to GTA 6 and the information that was revealed, the game is set in modern day and the primary reason behind it is GTA Online. Rockstar wants to be able to have as much freedom as they can in GTA Online DLCs. The map is Vice City and isn't going to be that big, but the map will be expanding with new locations being added and changing. Uh, Tom compares it with the changes to, say, like, you know, Fortnite's map and how it goes through every new season through the years with the help of DLCs. Game is still in the very early stages of development. Multiple protagonists with one being female. The female one is going to be the bright one in the group and be responsible for the technical stuff like hacking. Tom believes that the game will release around 2024 or 2025, with the reason being Rockstar is heavily focusing on employee well-being. And since the game will be current-gen PC only, Rockstar wants to wait for when the current-gen consoles have sold a lot of units so that they can maximize sales. And GTA 5 is still making a ton of money for them. And uh, yeah, so this is a lot of very interesting information about GTA 6. But what makes it even more interesting is that, again, Jason Schreier has corroborated this saying, I don't know why everyone thinks that I said GTA 6 was coming in 2023. Everything Tom Henderson has said about the game matches up with what I've heard. So we don't know if this is 100% true, but it seems very likely that the information we're being told about GTA 6 that most of this or the overwhelming majority of it is actually true and I have to say it all makes sense right like even if this is made up I could very much see this being exactly what Rockstar Games is doing um, the idea that GTA 
you know, six won't be set in modern times. Just, you know, I think it's obvious it was going to be because of GTA Online. Uh, what I find most interesting about this and most disappointing is that it's still apparently very early in development. And that is unfortunate. I think there's a positive and a negative to this. I think the positive is that we know for sure this will be a next gen only game. And that's very exciting because you think about what Rockstar could do maximizing and getting everything out of the next gen consoles and high end PCs, right? Or by that time, most PCs, because, you know, everything is going to be scaled up by that point. Um, or go beyond what these next gen consoles are. That's the exciting part to me. The disappointing part is that like, you know, we're going to have to wait years. It's already been many, many years and it's all been about GTA Online and everything else. And so it is relatively disappointing that we are going to have to wait. But, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how Rockstar handles this. I also find it interesting that if this is to be believed that the map apparently is going to be maybe smaller than GTA 5's or maybe the same size. It's not going to be any bigger, but they plan to expand it over time. Uh, that's interesting to me. It's also exciting that we will potentially be going back to Vice City because I enjoy GTA Vice City and it would be very interesting to see what that map could look like, uh, you know, updated, uh, you know, in, in 2024, I guess at this point. So yeah, just wanted to be sure to talk about this because I saw that some of you were asking me to cover this and mention it. So here we go. Thought I would put it at the end of this video. Maybe you can let me know down in the comments below what you think about this and make sure you let me know your thoughts on anything we talked about. But that does it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. Again, leave it a like if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.